Well, what a lineup for today's video. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking that both bikes behind me right now are more or less the same thing. They've both been designed with aerodynamics in mind. They've both been designed to cheat the wind and to go fast. Well, not quite. Obviously, they have both been designed to go fast, but they are technically different bikes. On one side, I have a UCI Legal time trial bike, and on the other side, I have a triathlon bike, and they have some significant differences. Now then, the fundamental difference between a time trial bike and a triathlon bike is that a time trial bike has been designed within the UCI rules, Professional Cycling's governing body. Now we've been really fortunate today to have actually been sent a UCI legal time trial bike from Felt. It's the Felt DA. And this one's come from UCI Pro Team Rally based in the US. And the reason I know it's genuine is because it's even got one of the rider's name tags on the top tube. So thank you very much, Magnus Sheffield. We promised to hand this back in mint condition. Now, I actually really like some of the wording on the Felt website with regards to the DA. It says, the DA represents not only our commitment to aerodynamic efficiency and rider fit optimization, but also to the collective ability of our mad scientists to cleverly eke out every bit of speed under a uniquely specific set of regulations. And well, it's that final bit that really hits the nail on the head, really. A time trial bike has to conform to those regulations set out by the UCI, which admittedly, they are relaxing a little bit with time, which is good news, but certain elements such as the tube widths, the aero bar lengths, the saddle position, all are closely monitored, which I do know some of that is there for safety, but oh, it is a bit boring, isn't it? Boring? Uh uh, it's not boring, this is riveting stuff. And just to make sure you triathletes know what you should be adhering to, well, I'm gonna talk you through the rules. The bike needs to comply to a triangular shape, a double diamond frame, and also every tube needs to be able to fit into eight centimeter boxes. In addition to comply with the rules, the nominal rear axle and bottom bracket axle need to be located within inside the down tube, chainstay, and seat tube boxes. The triathlon bike though, no chance. Wow. Just a few rules then. Well, actually, no, is, 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 I've got a few more from the rule book. Um, not, not, not quite finished. Uh, the, uh, well, these are, these are important. The extensions should not raise more than 10 centimetres above the top of the elbow pads. This is known as the 10 centimetre rule. Uh, the peak of your saddle must uh, be a minimum of five centimetres behind your bottom bracket. Um, that's actually, that's okay. Uh, and your aero bars must extend no more than 75 centimetres in front of your bottom bracket, uh, or 80 centimetres if you're as tall as Connor Dunn. Right, well, uh, thanks for the clarification on that, and um, yeah, really riveting stuff. Well, alternatively, the triathlon bike virtually has no rules to conform to, so the designers really can go wild. They can really push the boat out in pursuit of that speed and performance. There is, of course, comfort and practicality to take into account, given this bike is to get you around a triathlon, but in essence, the designers have free reign. So assuming you're a triathlete watching this, then I think you pick the right sports. Now, as an example, I have the Felt IA here. It's a dedicated triathlon bike. And well, yeah, the frame size is definitely in excess of eight centimeters. And that is all to improve its aerodynamics and the airflow attachment around the frame. And you likely have seen other brands with radical designs all in pursuit of that speed and aerodynamics. Things like missing down tubes, missing seat tubes, missing seat stays, beam bikes, full monocoque frames. And well, arguably they're quicker because they've been able to throw that rule book out of the window and deliver and design a bike that has the best numbers. At least that is the theory. And you've probably guessed it because yes, I am stood 
beside a racetrack here. I'm going to be doing a little versus. Time trial versus triathlon bike, which is quickest? Well, I'm here at Castle Coombe Racing Track. It's a 2.977 kilometer track. So I'm gonna be doing two laps on each bike. So just shy of six kilometers. And I'm gonna try and hold 300 watts for each run and simply see which one comes in fastest. Triathlon bike rolling start up to 300 watts. Let's go. Three hundred and two watts. Pretty good. All right, here we go. UCI TT bike up to three hundred watts. Let's go. Ah, that felt fast. Time to see what the results were. Okay, I know you're eager to hear the results, but first of all, I thought I'd actually just talk through how it actually felt. Now, I have obviously been riding the Felt IA, the triathlon bike, for some time now, and I feel like I've set myself up on it pretty well. I've got myself in a good aerodynamic, fast position, but also comfortable because, well, at the end of the day, I'm trying to ride that bike for sustained periods of time. That said, I don't feel like I've traded off too much of that aerodynamics and speed for that comfort. I feel like I've struck that balance pretty well. The TT bike, however, while this is the first time I have ever officially got myself and set up into a UCI legal position, and I've got to say, it felt pretty odd and quite hard. I mean, my glutes are hurting a bit now. I feel like I was kind of contorted a little bit, but at the same time, my goodness, it felt so aggressive. I felt lower on the front end. I felt really fast. The bike felt really rigid. And I know it sounds odd. It just sounded fast. Um, so if I was to make predictions based simply on feelings, I would say that bike was faster. It just felt really good. But the results are interesting because I went eight minutes and 16 seconds on the triathlon bike, the Felt IA. And then I went eight minutes and 20 seconds on the UCI Legal TT bike. So four seconds slower for the TT bike. Now, that's really interesting, but of course it's not all simply about speed and aerodynamics, at least it's not for the triathlon bike, because at the end of the day, that bike has got to get us through a triathlon and run well off. Now actually looking at the triathlon bike, the lack of rules within triathlon bike design and position can actually play into traffic's favour from a functionality standpoint too, not simply from a speed and aerodynamic standpoint. See, a lot of triathletes prefer to have their saddle position slightly further forward and that has allowed them to open up their hips a bit more whilst they're riding rather than being in a really cramped position and that in turn can help with the run off the bike. Actually, some brands make their seat tube angle on their triathlon bikes slightly steeper to help with this further and will quite often offer different seat posts with a slightly more forward position, reversible seat posts or multi-point options on those seat posts to help you. 
And then of course there's the front end. Now on TT bikes, they quite often have shorter head tubes and a slightly lower position, which will allow the rider to get into a more aggressive position. And I definitely felt that today. I felt far lower on this bike and really, really aggressive. And that's fine for short efforts, short TTs, but for 40K, 90K, 180K, those longer durations that we're typically doing in triathlons, well, that's less suitable. So for that reason, you tend to find a little bit more adjustability on the front end of a triathlon bike and quite often the option to go even higher to gain that comfort for those long durations. Well, there we go. I hope you now know the difference between these two bikes. The time trial bike is obviously designed simply to get a cyclist from A to B as fast as possible, even if it does require a little bit of contorting to get yourself into position sometimes. Whereas a triathlon bike, is designed to get you through a triathlon well and to run off the bike well. And as it seems, it can well be faster sometimes too. Now, I obviously, I love the TT bike. So if you're someone that loves the look of a TT bike and really wants one too, that's absolutely fine, particularly for the shorter events. But I would just advise thinking carefully about the storage options if you are planning to race anything longer. Well, there we go. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Don't forget to give GTN a follow over on social media. And if you're not doing so already, give us a subscribe just down below.